We continue our focus on Google now with two guests who have spent a lot of time studying the company. Ken Oletta is the author of Google, The End of the World as We Know It. The book was published in late November 2009 when Facebook had 325 million subscribers compared to 686 million today. Just a little perspective there for everybody. Also with us, Steve Weinstein is the senior research analyst at Pacific Crest Securities and a Bloomberg Best analyst for Google. So two perfect gentlemen to talk to. Uh, Steve, I want to kick it off with you. When it comes to growth, we are worried about where Google's going to grow its revenues in the future. Where do you think that growth will come from? Well, I think Google has lots of growth opportunities ahead of them. I think, first of all, that just the core search business actually is going to remain a double-digit growth business for many years to come. I think that's both domestic and international, um, especially as search just gets better over time and people find that they can get more information as you push into local or more unique unique pieces of content that you may be looking for. So the core business continues to be a lot of growth. But I'll also say that you know the company is having a lot of success in new initiatives such as display advertising. They're already doing a couple billion dollars in display advertising on media spend. It makes them one of the biggest display ad companies in the world. Um, I think you know the mobile opportunity is exploding in front of them, and that's all incremental business for them. So, I, I think they actually have multiple drivers. Hey, hey Ken, you, you know you've documented pretty well Google's uh, evolution past a one-trick pony into other revenue streams, but still, Facebook is a massive competitor, right? I mean, if people basically live on Facebook all day, why not search on Facebook? Why not buy things on Facebook? How can Google uh, combat that incredible force? It's a real problem for them. And, and, and in fact, Facebook is in Google's head. I mean, you, you spend time at Google and you realize they, they used to be the it company and they're not now. Facebook is. So they're worried that young engineers will gravitate towards Facebook and not towards Google. But Google is, it will continue to refine its algorithm and, and give you fewer answers. In fact, there are too many answers now. But, but they are really worried that, in fact, people will spend time on planet, as you're suggesting, planet Facebook, not be in the universe, which is Google. Google depends on your going to the Internet. Facebook does not. You make a one-stop off the Internet to Facebook, and they enrapture you. Ken, who is it that Google has actually, to Actually, can I, can I... Sure, no, Steve, I, please I would look do. at that a little bit. I would actually look at that a little bit differently, though. I, th I think... There's, there's two ways to look at it. There's, you know, how does Facebook impact time spent online and where that time is spent? And obviously Facebook is getting a ton of share from that and may continue to going forward. But then there's also the revenue engines behind these businesses. And yes, while advertising is a big piece of both, I think they actually solve different problems for advertisers. I think if you look at the success of Google, they do really well with direct marketers who are looking to drive a specific transaction. And that, that, that's a great business. I think there's a whole nother business and a whole nother bucket of advertising dollars around brand and how do you influence people's perception of your brand, um, different, different points in the purchase funnel that I think Facebook probably is going to play better to. So I, I, I don't know that there's as much kind of competition for dollars between those two as maybe the, the question suggests. I, I actually disagree. We, we do have a sharp difference here because you mentioned earlier, and I agree with you, about display advertising being a real growth engine for Google. But in fact, according to Comscore, there are more display ads today on Facebook than on Google. So Facebook, is, is they compete for display advertising. And so far, Facebook's doing pretty good. Well, I, I don't, Steve, I don't Steve, think don't they... it's the format. It's the, it's the intent of the advertiser where I think they're going to differ. So you can do um, display ads for multiple purposes. You can do it with a transaction component behind it, or you can do it with a branding intent or an but, awareness but, intent. But and Steve, I think there's going, to be, there's going to be areas of overlap, no doubt about it. But, but at the same time, I think if you look at where the strengths of those businesses are ultimately going to lie, I, I have a feeling they're going to be different. I just wonder, Steve, it, it doesn't matter what kind of advertising you're doing if nobody sees you, right? And I mean, uh, the way that Ken sort of well, lays it out as far as planets, right? I mean, if I, if I would love to just be able to log on to Facebook and do everything without ever leaving Facebook. And I'm sure some people would do that from the tweet deck, and some people probably do do that with the Google platform as well. Uh, but Google has to worry that more people do that on Facebook. More people live on their tweet deck than go to Google, right? Well, you think about, you think about search, for instance. If I'm looking for a good restaurant to go to, and I do a Google search, and I get back 10,000 answers, but if I go to my friends and I get 12 friends who I know who recommend a restaurant, which is a more efficient search for me? It's obviously Facebook. So they are very worried about Facebook moving into onto their turf. Now, I agree 
would see that, that in fact, Google has lots of other engines for growth in the future, YouTube, Android, cloud computing, display advertising, and, they, and, and, and search continues to grow. But Google has issues, and one of the big worries or big issues with them is what to do about Facebook. What about in terms of an engine for growth, and that is, I want to switch gears, guys, because it sounds like we could go on and on for this for a while, which I would love to, but it's TV, and we only have a limited amount of time. Um, what about um, the laptop space in terms of what Google's doing, Ken? I mean, does that make any so, sense? Well, it's, it's part of their cloud computing argument that, that, in fact, why pay for package software from Microsoft or Oracle? Come to us. We'll mm. store your information on the cloud. It'll be available on any machine you have, wherever you are. Geography is no issue any longer. But will people give up that control to put it in the cloud? What happens if the cloud is down? Mm -hmm. That has happened already. And, and those are real issues, whether people will give, see that kind of control to any cloud computing company. Hey, Steve, saved about 40 seconds here for you. Your final thoughts. Uh, I think that Google just has tremendous growth opportunities. Uh, you know, from everything from their search business to the new businesses in, in mobile and display. And while I think Facebook may go on to be an, an amazing company, and actually it already has proven to be an amazing company, I, I, I just I think there are going to be different companies solving different problems for both users and advertisers. And um, I, I think both companies are going to be able to add tens of billions of revenue over the next several years. Certainly exciting companies, both of them, no doubt about that. Steve and Ken, thank you so much. We appreciate Pleasure. it.